All right, question six, run a roll. Design a pushdown automaton that recognizes precisely the language A to the M, B to the N. There's strictly more Bs than As, and there's at least one A. Okay, it didn't specify that the pushdown automaton had to be deterministic, so we can totally cheat this problem, and the cheating solution is you design a context-free grammar, and then you do the magic conversion algorithm from the lecture slides. So if I can build a grammar to do this, then I basically get the, the PDA for free, right? Now, if the question said design a deterministic PDA, then you're screwed. Then you actually do got to build it from scratch. But it doesn't, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cheat. So what's the grammar for this? Well, what's the smallest valid string? I guess M has to be at least 1, and N has to be at least 2. So the smallest valid string is 1a and then 2b's. Okay, what else can I do? Well, I could add an a on the left. I can add as many a's as I want on the left. No, I, no, I can't. I'm allowed, to, I'm allowed to push n as big as can be. So I can throw infinity b's on the right, and that's okay. If I throw an a on the front, m gets bigger. So that means I have to add another B to compensate, because I can't add more A's than B's. So add an A, got to add a B to compensate. So I can pump infinite B's, but if I add an A, I'd better add a B alongside it, so that way this condition always holds. Uh, does that work? Um, a double B, got to have more B's, can pump infinite B's, put an A, put a B. Yeah, that feels like it works. And now we've got to convert to a PDA. So we just do the magic conversion algorithm. So step one is initialize. If I'm in the starting state, ignore the input, see the start of stack symbol, go to Q1 and push SZ. Step two, expand non-terminals. So if I'm in Q1, ignore the input. If I see S, I can pop S and push A, A, B. Or when I write these two dashes, I mean like the same thing again. Or I can push SB, or I can push ASB. Okay, rule three, match and pop terminals. So for, um, if I'm in Q1, and I see X on the input and X on the stack, I destroy both. This is for any X that's either A or B. And step four is uh, accept. So if I'm in Q1, ignore the input, see the bottom stack symbol, Transition to Q2, which is a final state, and push nothing back. Cool, so that's like the, the cheating answer. I didn't have to think about it. I just built the grammar and then converted it. Awesome. Is your automaton deterministic or non-deterministic? It's uh, non-deterministic. Uh, why? Because delta Q1 epsilon S has many transitions. Because I could do this, or I could do this, or I could do that. Makes it that's pretty non-deterministic. Okay, demonstrate using the pigeonhole principle or otherwise that the language given above is non-regular. Well, that's a bit of a tricky question. I'm gonna need a fair bit of room for that, so I'm gonna just skip the end of the exam to my little scribble paper and just jump here immediately. Uh, okay, I see. End of exam. Okay, here we go. So we want to prove. The language, what was the language again? It was A to the M, B to the N, more N's than M's and more M's than zero is non-regular. Um, in reality, if you're doing the exam, skip this question and come back to it at the end because this is a long one. It's only with four marks. Okay, so here's the proof. I'm going to call this language L. We assume L is regular. Okay, so there exists some DFA, I'll call it D, such that the language that D recognizes is precisely this language here, L. Okay, well, how do I make this fail? It looks like if I pump up the A's, I can break this condition, right? So I'm going to say, um, note that this set is infinitely large, epsilon a, double a, triple a, blah 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 is infinite. 
So we can note by the pigeonhole principle, if I'm in the starting state and I read two strings from this set, I go to the same place. So there exists an i, exists a j, i is not j, such that from the starting state, reading i many a's goes to the same place as reading j many a's. Okay? Now what I've got to do is choose a string from the language and then do this hot swap and make it screw up. Now the problem is because it's greater than, it actually matters which one I replace it with. I don't know which one's bigger. Well, I don't know i is not j, so maybe um, without loss of generality, which is just a fancy math word, so that basically says without making any real assumptions that change the problem, I'm going to assume i is bigger. Because if i is smaller, then I'll just like relabel i, I'll swap i with j, and then they are, then i is bigger, right? If i is not bigger, I'll just relabel them until it is. So I'll, I'll assume i is the bigger one. So now what I'm going to do is I want to pick a string that's just barely satisfying this condition, and then when you pump up the a's, it breaks. So because i is bigger, I'm going to choose w is equal to a to the j plus 1, b to the j. Uh, whoopsies. Yeah, so there's more j's, there's more b's than a's, so this condition holds. And is there more than 0 a's? Maybe not, j could be 0 for all I know, right, because that doesn't work. I'm going to choose, I'll just add, add one to each, right? So j plus 1, b to the j plus 2. Cool. Um, w is in the language. As there are more b's than a's, because j plus 2 is definitely bigger than j plus 1, and j plus 1 is strictly bigger than 0, because the very smallest j could be is, is 0. I can't have negatively many a's, right? That's not a string in this list. So then what I do is I sort of swap the j for i and make this break. So w is in the language, so that means from the starting state, if I read this string, j plus 1, b to the j plus 2, end up in a final state. So now I can use a pen theorem to strip off the first j many a's, a to the j, and then leave the rest behind, I'm still in a final state. And then I can use this little property up here to hot swap j many a's for i many a's. So let's do that. Oopsies. By append theorem. Uh, n star, n star, s0, a to the i, a, b to the j plus 2. Still a final state. And then do append theorem backwards. A to the i, a, b to the j plus 2, is that goes to final state. So a to the i, a, b to the j plus 2 is in the language. So a to the i plus 1, b to the j plus 2 is in the language. So if it's in the language, it's got to satisfy this property. There's got to be strictly more b's than a's. So that means j plus 2 is bigger than i plus 1 is bigger than 0. So I've got this property here. I've got that i is bigger than j. Can I cook up a contradiction? Maybe. So if j plus 2 is bigger than i plus 1, that means j plus 1 is bigger than i. And if j plus 1 is bigger than i, that means j is bigger than or equal to i. But i was bigger than j. If i is bigger than j, that means it's false to say j is bigger than or equal to i. So there, there's the contradiction. There we go. All right, that was a bit of a tough one, right? Because you had to sort of work out just the right string to choose to get the contradiction. So how did I work that out? I chose a string that was like right on the edge of violating this condition. And then when I swap out the J for something bigger, it, it stuffs up. Okay, that's the proof.